And coming up in the next 60 minutes, President Ekufado charges Ghanaians to ensure next year's general elections as transparent, free and fair. We all have a duty to conduct ourselves in such a manner that we have a free, fair and transparent election. We have more for you as the President tells some of government's achievements in the year 2019 plus ongoing plans to prosecute persons whose negligence led to the collapse of some banks here in the country. Also tonight, Education Ministry fights back accusing former President Mahama of peddling falsehood and plotting to get rid of the free senior high school program. Master system did not in any way reduce contact hours with teachers. The contact hours with teachers has gone down. I'm sure you've seen some of the media posts. And coming up later in business. In business, African Union in talks with governments of Nigeria and Benin to resolve issues that have resulted in closure of Nigeria's border for four months now. Really working very closely together to ensure that uh, uh, these issues uh, are resolved. Uh, it's part of uh, what I call the birth banks of the African continent of Rita area. And later in the bulletin, Chief and Queen Mother of Mankasim remanded into police custody by the South Pond District Court in connection with a shooting incident at Mankesim during the installation of a new Queen Mother there. Hello, this is John News Prime with me, Ernest Smith, and the bulletin is coming to you live from our studios here at Kukum Lim Lake here in Accra on digital address GA0992539. Stay with us. Thanks for joining us wherever you are. My name is Ernest Mino. To our very first story now, President Ekufuado says he's expecting a transparent, free and fair election in 2020. He says the Ghanaian electorate must have the opportunity to choose whoever they want as president and member of parliament in the atmosphere of peace. Speaking at a festival of nine lessons and carols held at the Jubilee House, President Ekufuado called on the country to be guided by the Christian values and faith and also reconciliation in this festive season. The president also touted some of his government's achievements in 2019 and spoke on the banking crisis that led to the collapse of some commercial and savings and loans companies. After the government, the first lady, my wife Rebecca, my daughters, grandchildren and my family, I wish all Ghanaians and people the world over a Merry Christmas and Happy Prosperous New Year. Let us also take a moment to reflect on our country, on how far God has brought us, and on the many blessings, especially of freedom, peace, and stability he continues to shower upon us. We have good reason to be thankful to God for the mother's successes we chalked over the course of 2019. 1.2 million of our children have today unfettered access to senior high school education, the highest enrollment in our history. We've revived our healthcare system. We've had bumper harvests of foodstuffs for two years in succession, with food prices at their lowest in years. Tens and tens of thousands of teachers, health workers, graduates and non-graduates alike have been given jobs. We have retooled and re-equipped our police service and armed forces to a considerable extent. Our economy is one of the fastest growing economies in the world this year. And we are the largest recipient of foreign direct investment in West Africa. We've had to take painful but necessary measures to sanitize and save the banking system. A process which I know has brought discomfort to many a household. It is worthy to note, however, that the jobs of some 6,500 workers were saved as a result, instead of the 10,000 that could have been lost. In addition to the protection of funds of 4.6 million depositors. Thus far, the Ministry of Finance and the Bank of Ghana have worked together to guarantee payment of 100% of deposits of customers of the failed banks, which is being done. I've directed the Ministry of Finance to work with the Bank of Ghana 
to ensure the same applies to customers of microfinance and savings and loans companies whose licenses have been revoked. Next year is another important year in our democratic journey. We will hold in December 2020 the eighth general election in the history of the Fourth Republic. We all have a duty to conduct ourselves in such a manner that we have a free, fair, and transparent election that will enable the Ghanaian people to choose in peace and serenity the person and persons who will manage their affairs on their behalf. I am confident that yet again, Ghanaians will rise to the occasion and reinforce the status of Ghana as a beacon of democracy on the continent. The government has rejected claims by former President John Mahama that the education sector has been mismanaged. The former president, during his Facebook Live interaction yesterday, accused government of failing to effectively implement the free SHS program, adding, among others, that he will abolish the double track and scrap the teacher licentia exam if elected and embark on an aggressive infrastructure program to open up space in the country's schools if given the mandate at next year's election. A government through the Education Ministry has today been countering Mr. Mohammed's proposals. Let's first watch Mr. Mohammed's proposal on the double track system. A review is to improve. Even the president with the current implementation of free SHS, at a point in time, you need to review a policy and see if you are meeting the targets or not. And I believe that he can see that he's not meeting his targets. I mean, the congestion in the schools. I mean, recently a school went on demonstration because they say they can't take the congestion anymore. The, uh, the reduction in contact. Where, where, where was this? The, you uh, this? Well, you are in the media. I'm sure if you Google, you'll find there's a school that demonstrated okay. because they said they were over congested and they couldn't take it anymore. Okay. Um, I mean, the contact hours with teachers has gone down. I'm sure you've seen some of the media posts. There was a parent who said his child was moved from green to gold. They went to school. The first week was sports week. The second week was something. They started learning in about the third week. And after two... I actually made a post on Oh, you did. And in, in, uh, the, the, by the fourth week, they said they should go back home. Yeah. And they should come back in March or February or something. I mean, yeah. How are you going to expect a child like this with such few contact hours to be able to uh, make it? And then aside from that, instead of improving the system, you go and buy past questions and distribute to children. This is the first government I've seen go buy past questions and distribute to children. And so when I say review, I mean to improve. And the first thing we'll do is to abolish the, 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 the double track. We will fast track the completion of those schools and we will spread out the children to some of the schools that are completed. There are a lot of projects that we started under the Secondary Educational Improvement Program. It's a World Bank project. And we're building additional dormitories and others. Those projects have all slowed. And so we'll fast track all those projects so that we can create more space in the schools for the, the children. And so that's uh, former President Mahama Bhatt, the Education Minister, Dr. Uh, Educhun, that's the deputy, addressing the news conference today in response to Mr. Mahama, says scrapping the double track system would mean cancelling the free senior high school policy. Dismiss that system, increase the number of contact hours from 1,080 hours to 1,130 hours, I think 34 hours. So the semester system did not in any way reduce contact hours with teachers. Because what we did was essentially look at, okay, instruction is by hours, not days, not months. So if you are introducing the semester system, what is it going to do for our students? So we had a longer school day, and then with the longer school day, our periods that were ending in 40 minutes became 60 minutes. I have a friend who is a teacher who told me for the first time he's going to finish his syllabus within two years because now he has more time to work with the students. So double track, which brought in semester, in no way, shape, or form reduced contact hours with teachers. But of course, you can have situations where in a certain school, the school is not being run well and, and somebody can make those kind of mistakes. So I'll be very happy if in the future the 
uh, you have the information or the former president, if you meet him, you ask him, and I'm sure you have more access to him than myself. I've always offered to brief him if he wanted. Um, so <laughs> you have access to him and ask him to give us the name of the school and we'll be more than happy. Let me tell you this. Headmasters are innovative. I've met them. I've talked to them. Majority of your headmasters want to do well. They want their schools to do well. So I'll be very surprised that they'll be playing games for three weeks and then a few days they talk to teachers and they send them home. I don't believe that any headmaster in this country under the leadership of Professor Pukwa Mankwa, who is the Director General, will keep the kids on the playgrounds for three weeks doing nothing and then send them. I don't believe it. Now, the former president also spoke on the teacher licensure exam. However, Dr. Iduchum says the idea is not well thought through. President Mahama, to his credit, in his 2016 budget, had talked about the fact that he was going to pilot teacher licensing. And in fact, he listed uh, some of the areas like Upper Menya Krobo, uh, Kasina Nankana East, um, as some of the areas where he was going to pilot teacher licensing. I give him credit for taking initiative that we also continued when we came to office. And for some reason, probably he has forgotten. That's why I'm sending this reminder that Mr. President uh, John Dramani Mahama, Your Excellency, uh, you saw the need to start the uh, NTC teacher licensing. And when we came, we felt strongly that something as good as teacher licensing that you have initiated, we needed to continue. So if you're talking about counseling, uh, I, I don't know what's going on. We have newspaper, daily graphic headlines, um, uh, which uh, was uh, actually 21st of September uh, 2016. And you can see from here by the then uh, Director General of Ghana Education Service talking about teacher licensing in 2016, 2017 academic year. So the plan that they had begun is what we continue. And we continue because we believe it's a good thing. Um, as a teacher, I remember the first day I got my license, and it was such a good feeling that I've been validated. The whole world knows that I'm a teacher. Now joining us via Skype uh, for more on this is Peter Party Anti, an education analyst with the Institute for Education Studies. Many thanks for your time, sir, here on Joy News Prime. Now, what are your initial comments on the back and forth between the former president and government, uh, led by the Deputy Education Minister? I, thank you very much, and good evening. Good evening. Yes, uh, I think it is it is good for our um, policy. Uh, space in the education sector because it's always important that we continue to exchange ideas and see how best we'll be able to shape our education to to serve the needs of the country. So um, any, any kind of debate, any kind of issue that will call for um, uh, exchange of ideas to, 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 to improve some of the things that we are doing in the sector is, is, is much welcomed. Now, now let's look at the former president's suggestion, his idea of a more rapid and drastic approach in dealing with the issue of uh, double track, for instance, and you uh, look at that vis-a-vis -vis government's explanation uh, with the overwhelming numbers. Uh, do you think, you know, his approach is feasible? What do you think? Yes, uh, we have to understand the reason why we, we uh, the, the government implemented a double track system. That is something that we have to appreciate, that at that time we had a chunk of our kids who needed to access secondary education, but because of the infrastructure deficit, they were not able to access. So what do we do? We decided to run a tracking system. And we should understand that the tracking system, what, what the multi-track system, is something that has been practiced all, all over the world where there are specific issues with infrastructure mm -hmm. and you want to bring in a, a, a stop in the gap measure in order that you'll be able to address that particular challenge. So that is something that is done. If um, the, 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 the former president decides to scrap it as soon as they come into office, mm -hmm. then it means that within that particular space in time, they have to improve the infrastructure available in all the schools, which is practically impossible. So when the, the, the current government said that they are giving themselves five years, we at the Institute for Education Studies came and said that, no, you can do this within three years. Make sure you expand infrastructure, and by three years, everybody is, uh, the, the, all the schools are taking off the track system. So 
personally, we were thinking that um, in in t talking about reviewing the free SHS, there are more pressing issues with the free SHS. And one of the pressing issues is the financing of the free SHS because running the, the policy for three years, we are now seeing the amount of money that is going into um, that sector. And most of it is coming from the oil revenue. So we were thinking that if the former president is talking about reviewing, he is looking at how can we sustain the free SHS <clears throat> the free SHS, when the oil revenue uh, is not coming in, how can we improve the quality of education at the secondary school level so that the students that are coming out from the mm -hmm. free SHS would be more productive to the society that they are going to fall in and not just continue to teach institutions like we are doing always. So we were thinking the review should go there because whether we like it or not, tracking system would end sooner or later. And if it does that, if, 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 if it happens that way, then it means that the, the, the review that they are talking about... So is, for you, is, the is review not... should go beyond the issue of infrastructure. And whilst you think that the former president's approach uh, may bring some challenges. You also think that government can fast track the issue of addressing the infrastructure and they can do that within three years instead of five years. Uh, Mr. Anti, thank you very much for your time here on Join News Prime. And he is with the Institute of Education Studies, bringing us some perspective on the issue of free SHS. You're watching Join News Prime with me, Ernest Minu. Still to come in the bulletin, Paramount Chief and Queen Mother of Mankesim remanded into police custody by the South Pond District Court in connection with a shooting incident at Mankesim during the installation of a new Queen Mother there. We have details after the break. Thanks for staying with us here on Joy News Prime. Now, the Paramount Chief and the Queen Mother of Mankasim, Nana Amba Emisa III, have been remanded into police custody by the South Pond District Court. The two are to reappear before the court on the 8th of January 2020. The Chief and Queen Mother have been charged with conspiracy to commit crime, murder, and causing unlawful harm by state prosecutors in connection with a shooting incident at Mankasim during the installation of a new Queen Mother there. Richard Kojinako has more in the following report. The Omahin and the Queen Mother appeared in court in the white Toyota Corolla. Osajifu Amanfuidu the fourth was in a white Batakari while the embattled Queen Mother of Mankesim Nana Amba Emisa the third stepped out in the traditional outfit with a headgear to match. The Mankesim chief Tensi Tassa got to a head after a faction of a protracted chief Tensi dispute at Mankasim and stood a new queen mother after a high court in Cape Coast on November 11, 2019, ruled that the names of the Omahini of the Mankasim traditional area and the queen mother be expired from the register of the National House of Chiefs. While the newly installed queen mother was being paraded through the principal street of Mankasim, some gunmen in a story building opened fire at those taking part in the procession. Two persons, including the BNI officer for the Mfansama municipality, were killed, while eight persons, including a policeman, sustained various degrees of injuries. The Central Regional Police arrested the chief and the queen mother, who they believe were part of the grand plot to scatter the instrument process and the disturbances that ensued. Praying the court to admit them to bail, lawyer for the accused, Francis Boy Sufi, argued before the court, presided over by patient Ablo, that the two were prominent members of society and would not interfere in the case. He pleaded for clemency for the two and asked the court to look at the season and the time and admit them to bail pending trial. But that never materialized. Presiding judge Patience Ablo indicated that she has taken into consideration the time and the season but cannot grant their request. According to her, the district court has no jurisdiction to grant the accused bail in the pending case unless the high court. She averred their status in society does not matter in the current scheme of things. She explained equality before the law is what the rule of law is all about. Lawyer for the accused, Francis Boesilfi, spoke to Joy News after the proceedings. It's unfortunate that they have been arrayed before courts at a time that we are disabled from filing an application immediately at the High Court to secure their bill. But that notwithstanding, they are well conditioned. They know that they are innocent of the offence that they have been leveled against them, and they are appropriate time. Their innocence shall be proved. For now, 
they will go in, we will do everything within our means as a team of lawyers. My other colleagues were not here. We put our heads together to know what we will do. And so we are waiting the police for them to conclude their investigations and at the appropriate time we will appear before courts and do whatever we have to do as far as the case is concerned. There are times that the accused persons are arraigned before your courts. That day, the prosecution know that the courts cannot grant them bail. All that they come to do is to have them remanded. But as I indicated, it's unfortunate that the same has happened. We were thinking that they were only going to be interrogated as as yesterday for them to be released. The two were thus remanded into police custody to reappear on the 8th of January 2020. This brings to 13 the total number of persons that have been remanded into police custody following the shooting incident at Mankasim. There was heavy security presence at the premises of the courts. I could count up to about 30 police personnel stationed at Vante Point at the court premises. From the district court at Solpon, my name is Richard Kwejonyako for Joy News. Moderator of the General Assembly of the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, the very Reverend Dr. Seth Senor Agidi, has charged the two main political parties to use this yotai to reconcile and be at peace with one another while uniting ahead of the 2020 polls. His call follows heightened concerns by some Ghanaians, including the Deputy Commissioner of Police, Kofi Boachi, who is predicting that Ghana could witness some disturbances if political vigilantism is not checked. Speaking to John News, Dr. Gidi called on leaders of both the NPP and the NDC to unite their followers to prevent any conflict next year. This, this unity uh, time is a time also to wish each other God's blessing. I think this also uh, must go to the leaders of this country um, that they should use their time to reconcile with one another. Governance is about ideas. It is not about fighting. It is uh, about the method each party is using. And therefore, we are not enemies. They should use this unity time to wish each other well, exchange gifts, so that we, the followers, must also emulate them. If we see our, our leaders uh, wishing each other the best and also reconciling with each other, I believe it will also roll down to um, the followers so that the foot soldiers, uh, the both uh, NDC, NPP and other political parties will see each other as one people, as Ghanaians. You have only one country, it's Ghana, and therefore um, uh, uh, party politics should not be about do and die. And that's it for John News Prime on Christmas Eve. Many thanks for your company. Please log on to myjoyonline.com. We have more stories there. I'm Ernest Minute. Good night. <laughs>